So as the data x has m linearly independent row, only first m columns are important in matrix V for representing this data, right? So if you want to take this and they are independent, assuming all the images are independent, right? What we are saying here is that probably we need only m column in the matrix V to represent this overall data. So if that is the case, right? What we will need to represent this overall matrix X is probably the whole U matrix, only a sub portion of the sigma matrix, right? Where we have, we are going from sigma one to sigma M and all the other remaining columns in the sigma matrix are going to be equal to zero. So all the entries of this columns are going to be zero. They are redundant, so we are not going to be using it. And then we will use only M column of the V matrix and we will throw away all the remaining. Remember this, what is the size of V matrix? The size of V matrix is essentially N by N and we are not going to be using you know, most of the representation of the V matrix to represent this data. So what we are saying, since we have M number of linearly independent rows, in order to represent something like this, we only can use this portion of the factorization and we can throw away this portion of the sigma matrix and this portion of the V transpose matrix and that will us give us a very good representation of what X is. And this is one way of doing, you know, very quickly reducing the number of, you know, dimensions that is needed. So for SVD, what is happening? The U1 is getting multiplied by sigma one and then that is getting multiplied by V1 transpose, right? So you think about, you know, for as U1 gets multiplied by V1 transpose and that gets scaled with sigma one. So when we are representing this, right, matrix X, this could be thought of, and we can write this as sigma one times u one times v transpose one, plus we can add now second component and second column and take the transpose there. So u two scaled u two times v two transpose scaled by sigma two is another way to write this overall matrix, and we can carry this on for m number of terms. And you know when we go to the mth sigma right, singular val value that we have, right, that will be sigma m, u m times v, v m transpose that is there. So we can, you know, essentially write this overall matrix as a sum of this, uh, you know, this set of operations that we have, right. So even though we have n columns in the matrix V, there are only m non-zero singular values. And because of only m linearly independent rows in data matrix X, we are considering till m singular values for the matrix u, sigma, and v, okay? So when we write this overall matrix x as a product of this terms, right, we are reducing, you know, and the number of, you know, data points that you are, you know, um, the storage values will be re reduced, and this reduction is known as economy SDVD. So now this x is represented by this truncated u hat, sigma hat, v transpose, matrix and this is called you know, you know truncated matrix right and in our case of example we need to write the economic matrix s because n is large n is very very high compared to m so this will give you a way of reducing the number of you know uh, uh, storing the matrix x or doing something useful for the x in a lower dimensional space that we have okay now one of the other things that we want to notice is that the matrix that we get after multiplying sigma u, uh, sigma one, u one, and v one transport, it is rank one matrix. Similarly, all of this are essentially rank one matrix individually, okay? Uh, because the matrix by construction has exactly one linearly independent row and column, and that follows for all the remaining other things, right? So the SVD can be also interpreted as decomposing the data matrix X into orthogonal basis u and v, which we can consider it as a sum of rank one matrices, multiple different rank one matrices. That's another important interpretation of what we are doing with the X matrix that we have here, okay? And when we are using this information, right, when we are moving from this addition to this addition, we are increasingly improving the approximation for X. This is going to represent, you know, uh, capture most of this information, then we, this will compare a little bit less than this, but, and you know, but when we are going and summing all of this, all of these items together, we will get very close to the actual matrix that we there, okay? So these matrices are increasing, improving approximation for the data matrix X we have, 
okay? The first rank one matrix defines the best approximation of our X. So this will define the best approximation for the X. And the second rank one matrix defines the second best approximation for X and so on. So this will be the second best, third best, and it's the mth best approximation, right? And this could also give us a basis to, you know, truncate and maybe we will not want to use all the M uh, because this might be contributing very small to the overall uh, best approximation of S and that also helps us in reducing the representation that is needed to capture X we have. Okay, so after applying SVD, what we do is since we know that, you know, when we are gradually moving to the right words, uh, those rank one approximations are not capturing most of it, we can truncate the computations up to Rth, right? So what we can do is we can take a truncation, we can take a computation which takes this one, the second one, up to an Rth value. So somewhere between here, what we will do is we will go here and we will have this sigma R, right? U, R, and V, R, transpose, okay? And we will only do computations to that and anything after R and till M is going to be thrown away. And this is something that we can do. This sort of truncation is possible and up to Rth value will give you some approximation, probably a very good approximation, not the perfect approximation, but a very good approximation of X matrix that you have. And that is also possible. And that truncation is, you know, is also useful in many, many cases, right? So we can, you know, essentially we can do truncation of matrices till Rth singular value. Okay, because Rh singular value, we are getting very small values for sigma, which is hardly contributing to or improving the approximation of the data matrix. And what we mean by that is that any single one rank approximation after the Rth, right, till Mth is not adding significant contributions in terms of approximating the actual matrix X. So maybe it is a good idea to throw them away because they are not doing and they might be there because of noise and so on that we have in our data set. So this idea of only using the Rth where R is less than M, right, uh, it could be also used to do the matrix truncation, okay? okay. And this is also known as truncating after the RS sigma value. So what we are saying is rather we can take the X and we rather than, you know, uh, you know, writing that X in the form that we have here, what we can do is we can write them as, so instead of M, BM and sigma M, we can cut this away and we can just take a substitution up to UR, beat R and sigma R values. Okay? And if we do that, what we can do is we can write the X as product of three different matrices, okay, which is given here. The dimension of this is going to be M cross R, dimension of this is going to be R cross R, right? And again, so, you know, we will be throwing away uh, the values, not going away to the sigma M values. And the dimension of this matrix is going to be N cross R, okay? And this is another way of essentially, uh, you know, writing this overall matrices. So we will not use all the M's, we will use a portion of it. And similarly, as you will see, that what you're going to do is we are going to use only fraction of U, Sigma, and the V transpose matrices, which are highlighted by the boxes that you see here. And that is another way of representing the matrix X, okay? And this, after truncation up to Rth singular value, you can write that X is approximated by this U tilde, Sigma tilde, V tilde transpose, where, you know, we are basically, the U tilde is of the dimension M, M cross R, sigma tilde is the dimension of R cross R, and, you know, V transpose tilde is of dimension N cross R, okay? And so we will let, we will, you know, we can write X as this truncated mat matrix, and you will see that this is also, in many cases, our good representation of the matrix X. Mm -hmm.